वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल द डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई प्रोफेसर शौर्य शाह वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन द डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ अग्रवाल विद्या विहार इंग्लिश मीडियम कॉलेज आई होप दैट ईच वन ऑफ यू आर सेफ एंड हेल्दी एट योर होम एंड यू ऑल मस्ट बी डूइंग ग्रेट ड्यूरिंग दिस करंट सिनेरियो ड्यू टू द करंट सिचुएशन we need to meet for the lectures through digital medium i welcome you all to the final year of your college you must be very excited to learn the new things and the new subjects i will be taking your tyb com semester 5 advanced accounting and auditing sir as you all know you all as the students of account specialization you have studied four subjects during your second year bcom that were advanced accounting auditing paper 1 paper 2 paper 3 and paper 4 commonly known as cost accounting and corporate accounting now dear students when you are in tyb bcom you need to study one compulsory paper of accounting that is advanced accounting and auditing paper 6 this will be a combined paper with advanced accounting and auditing paper 6 and paper 7 as you are having a group subject in syb now till now you have studied all types of accounts that is financial accounting and funds accounting now when you are in tyb com this subject is particularly related to your management account so dear students we'll be continuing our first lecture for the syllabus discussion of the entire paper and how your paper style comes in your university examination now moving ahead i'll like to continue first of all with the syllabus of entire paper and before starting the discussion i would like each and every student to have a pen a paper and a calculator with each lectures as all my lectures will be a hands on lecture we will be solving the sums together after discussing the theory and as you all know we have our own google classroom for each and every class of our college feel free to ask any doubts regarding the subject and any queries regarding any theory or practical in the google classroom we will be solving your query across the google classroom immediately as soon as your query comes so friends ready for the lecture we'll be start learning and have a productive session for throughout the semester so friends beginning with the syllabus of your tyb bcom accounts paper 6 the entire paper is divided into four units out of that four units two are your practical units we can say and two are your theory chapters amongst that the very first is your management accounting it is a completely theory chapter the weightage of the chapter is 10% as you can see on your screen the chapter consists of meaning nature scope functions of management accounting role of management accounting and there is a comparison you need to study between management accounting and financial accounting there are again various tools and techniques of management accounting now students your entire paper is related to your management accounting now you must be curious to know what is the difference between the financial accounting which you have learned so far and what is the management accounting so briefly i can tell you that management accounting is a system of accounting which helps the management to perform its functions efficiently in other words i can say accounting for management is a accounting that is done 
with the basic objective of preparation of statements and reports to present the information to the management. As we all know, any business, any company, any trust is run by its own management. Now for running the business, for taking the decisions, for policy making, for finance purpose, they need each and every type of information. And this information related to particularly finance accounts is provided by management accounting. So management accounting functions particularly related to planning, controlling, organizing, decision making, and policy formulating related to particularly accounts of the business. That is particularly related to your management account. So students, what you need to study in this particular chapter is complete theory about the meaning, nature, scope, functions of management accounting. What is the role of management accounting in decision making, as I told you earlier, and various points in this particular chapter. It is a very small chapter, the basics to know the subject, what is it all about, and it is having a weightage of 10 percent. Moving ahead, the second chapter is your financial statements. Now, as you must be knowing, how many types of financial statements are there? Till now, right from your very much school level, we are studying mainly three types of financial statements. You must be knowing the very first is your trading account, second is your profit and loss account, and the third is your balance. In addition to that, there are several other types of financial statements also. But for that, you need to post study. What do you mean by financial statement? So in this particular chapter, you need to study the meaning of financial statements, their objectives, why they are prepared, how many types of financial statements are there and what are the limitations of financial statements? We all are aware regarding some or the other points of the basic financial statements. So in detail, you will study in this particular chapter. The second part of this chapter gives you the techniques and types of financial statement analysis. Now preparing the financial statement is one point and Making the analysis out of that statement is another point. So you need to study very thoroughly being a management accountant. How you will analyze the financial statement and you will provide the reports to the management. So mainly you need to study three types of financial statements. The first among them is common size statement. Second is trend percentage. And the third is comparative statement analysis. And you all must be aware of some or the other terms out of this entire syllabus. We'll be going through each and every detail in the particular chapter when we start it. Right? I'll be giving you all the notes also for the particular theory chapter in the Google Classroom itself. You need to study, then we'll be discussing. I hope it is clear to each and every student Fine. Moving ahead to the particular practical part of the subject. Now, students, as I said earlier, these two chapters which we discussed, management accounting and financial statements, are your theory chapter, completely theory chapter. Now, moving ahead to the main part, that is methods of financial statement analysis. Amongst that, the very first practical chapter is your ratio analysis. Now ratio analysis, the term ratio, you all must be familiar with, right? So this chapter particularly is having 25% weightage of your entire 50 marks paper. So you need to study it very thoroughly. I can say a very easy chapter, a very much knowledgeable chapter, if you know the concepts thoroughly and clearly. So if I briefly tell you what is the chapter all about, it is particularly divided into, first of all, what do you mean by ratio? What are the uses of ratio, advantages, limitations? Then you need to study classification of ratios. Now, very briefly, if I tell you, 
your ratios are mainly classified into three types as you can see on your screen the very first type is your profitability ratio now you all know what do you mean by profitability right the profit which a business is earning throughout the entire financial year or a particular period of time amongst that profitability ratio the very first ratio is your gross profit margin ratio right we'll be discussing each and every type of ratio when we start the chapter this is just for your brief overall idea that what we are going to do in the entire particular subject so gross profit ratio as you all must be knowing gross profit is derived from your trading account right so when you do your particular sales or when your turnover comes you deduct certain expenses from that you get particular gross profit so what is the ratio of that gross profit right we need to study in this particular chapter now before moving ahead i need to clarify what do you mean by ratio just think for a while have you ever heard the term called ratio yes friends in everyday life we are using this kind of ratio i can tell you now ratio particularly many students think if i say it is 2 is to 3 then your mind immediately starts working on it yes 2 is to 3 is a ratio 3 is to 1 is a ratio but if i say you have scored 70% of marks in syb com so is it a ratio think for a while many of you must be thinking that it is not a ratio but in reality it is also a ratio if i say your marks are two times compared to your friends marks is it a ratio yes it is also a ratio now when we are into this chapter of ratio you have to think that there are mainly three types of ratio the one is your comparison that is 2 is to 3 which i told you second the percentage form is also a ratio because ratio is again a relation between two numbers of similar so if i say 70% so 70% is out of 100% so it is also a ratio now when i say two times two times compared to whom so that another person that is also a ratio right so when i say ratio it is always a comparison between two related particular things i hope it is clear to each and every student okay so we were on your profitability ratio so first is your gross profit margin ratio second is your net profit as you all know net profit you can get from profit and loss statement okay next you are having is your operating ratio next expenses ratio then return on capital employed ratio return on shareholders fund ratio and return on equity share capital ratio so all this ratio if you look at on a broader sense all are related to your profit gross profit net profit operating ratio operating ratio shows you the amount of operating expenses and the profit you have made out of it expenses ratio what are your total expenses to a particular amount of turnover you can come to know from this particular ratio again return on capital employed how much total capital you have invested in your business and how much return you are getting again we can say it is a in layman's language it is profit on your investment so that ratio particularly you can find it from this particular ratio return on shareholders fund if i am a shareholder if i am a equity shareholder i am a preference shareholder i have my own reserves and surplus how much return i am getting particularly from the business then it is return on share that's fine if i am a equity shareholder how much return i am getting by investing in my business is return on equity share capital ratio i hope each and everyone is clear with particularly profitability ratios fine moving ahead leverage ratio now what do you mean by leverage again we will be seeing when we go through this ratio you all must be familiar with the term debt you all must be familiar with the term equity as you all know in balance sheet you have two sides one is your assets second 
is your liabilities. Now, when you were in your particularly early years of your school or college, you must have learned the another name of your liability is your sources of fund, and another name of your assets is application of fund. So, sources of fund you all must be knowing they can get through various sources. Amongst that, mainly if I tell you, there is owner's fund, that is your shareholders, reserves and surplus. There is borrowed fund, among that also long-term fund, you can borrow short-term fund, you can borrow. So amongst that, debt is the fund which you are borrowing from the outside. Right? So what is the ratio of the outside funds and your owner's fund is known as debt equity ratio. Proprietary ratio. As a proprietor, as a owner of your business, right? what is the fund which you have invested that you need to calculate? Capital gearing ratio. What do you mean by capital gearing ratio? To gear is to accelerate, right? So again, capital gearing ratio means how much outside borrowings, that is fixed interest borrowing. You can say you have debentures, you have a bank loan, so all this interest. How much you are paying compared to your total capital you need to calculate long-term funds or you can say that is fixed assets ratio long-term funds to fixed asset ratio how much is your total fixed assets for example if i say in my business i have a fixed assets of one crore rupees and my total long-term funds is 50 lakh so i can say what is my ratio 50 lakh divided by 1 crore into 100. So I can say out of my total 1 crore of fixed asset, 50% of that, that is 50 lakh, comes from my long-term fund. Getting it, students? Okay. Again, interest coverage ratio. How much total interest you are paying for the entire capital which you have borrowed? That is interest coverage ratio. I hope each and everyone is clear with that part. Okay. Moving ahead. Third type of ratio. That is first, we saw profitability ratio. Second, we saw leverage ratio. The third is your liquidity ratio. Amongst liquidity, you all must be knowing. In current time period, you must be hearing this term each and every day. There is a liquidity crunch. Liquidity position of the businesses have become weak. So what do you mean by liquidity? Liquidity is the liquid position, the cash, the working capital, which you are holding on your hand. Right? So in order to calculate liquidity ratio, you need to have these three main heads in your mind. That is first is current ratio. Now what do you mean by current ratio? It is a ratio of current assets and current liabilities. Now, we have very well studied in your balance sheet. What do you mean by current assets? Yes, you thought right. The examples are debtors, cash, stock, inventory, bills receivables, so on and so forth. What do you mean by current liability? Those liabilities which are paid in a very short period of time. We can say 12 months or less than that. That is creditors, bills payable, any outstanding expenses, outstanding tax for a particular year. So all this are your current liabilities. A very, very important ratio for the management to know the working capital. How much do you require in your day-to-day -day time period? So current ratio is basically a ratio showing you current assets compared to current liabilities. Fine. What do you mean by liquid ratio? Liquid ratio is particularly a part of current ratio only, but you remove stock out of it. We'll be seeing the formulas and all when we study the chapter, but just for your idea, liquid ratio, we do not consider stock in it because it takes time to convert stock into cash or money, right? So stock is deducted from, it, from your current asset. Okay. What do you mean by asset tax ratio? Again, asset test ratio is a kind of quick ratio. It is a part of your liquid ratio only. But you take into account only absolute cash item. Cash or cash equivalent. The head which we had studied in your balance sheet. 
this ratio is calculated from that particle only fine so moving ahead the third part that is turnover ratio turnover ratio the term itself says you must have thought that how many times the turnover takes place maybe it related to your stock if i say two times so two times during a particular period of time my stock changes if i say daters ratio how many times my daters changes right so how many time i am receiving money from my daters for a particular transaction that is daters ratio creditors ratio similarly how many times i have to pay to creditors in a particular period of year that shows you creditors ratio total assets turnover ratio this is related to the turn of over of your particular assets compared to your say right so friends you all must be aware and you all must have been clarifying your knowledge particularly to the chapter of ratio analysis again i repeat a very easy chapter if you thoroughly study the formulas and understand it it will be a very good thing for you right okay i hope everyone is clear with the ratio analysis chapter fine then we'll be moving on to your second practical chapter that is fund flow statement Now, when I say fund flow statement, the term fund should come in your mind, and the term flow should be added to that. What do you mean by fund? In layman's language, fund is considered to be cash only, right? But the fund is a very wide term. Now, when we are studying management accounting, fund includes your inflow and outflow from your fixed assets also. fund includes your inflow and outflow from your current assets also fund includes your inflow and outflow from your investing activities also so when we are studying this particular fund flow statement it comprises of two main thing the very first is your working capital statement related to your current assets and current liabilities the second part is your actual fund flow statement it includes three main parts that is first related to your investing activities second related to your operating activities and the third is related to your financing activities when we study the entire chapter we will be doing it in much more detail a completely practical chapter having a weightage of 25 percent you need to follow the format you need to follow the steps and your chapter is done fine Okay, the second part of the the third practical chapter in your syllabus is your cash flow state. Now, when I use the term fund, it includes the cash from your every activity. Now, when I say cash flow statement, it purely shows you the inflow and outflow of cash and cash equivalent. Right. So, according to this chapter, you need to prepare one cash flow statement. showing you the inflow and outflow of your cash and your opening and closing balance of your cash fine we'll be solving it again practically and you have to prepare this statement according to your accounting standard 3 you have studied various accounting standards during your previous years of study so according to this particular standard you need to prepare form the weightage is again 25% so in all in your syllabus you have two theory chapters again i repeat the management accounting and you have financial statements again three practical chapters ratio analysis fund flow statement and cash flow statement right here friends note that your marks for your like you had costing and corporate the marks for advanced accounting and auditing paper 6 and paper 5 will be added together in a combined group marks this is a compulsory accountancy subject that you need to practice i hope each and every one must be having a overview of the entire syllabus very very clear in your mind fine so we wish you a very happy learning for the entire semester right okay the next part of my lecture will be moving on to the paper pattern have your paper will be there the pattern will be same we'll be discussing it in a very brief form the very first 
as you all know will be same like your last year you will be having short questions this will be comprising of your 10 marks you have only and only three practical chapters right so there will be three sums one will be from ratio analysis second will be from cash flow and the third will be from fund flow there may be one of the two marks or one mark theory question out of two theory chapters also so in all there may be three to four particularly short questions in your first question that will be comprising your 10 marks second question will be a long sum. Now this long sum will be of 14 marks, may be asked either from ratio analysis, may be asked either from fund flow or may be asked either from cash flow. There will be two options. Out of that, you need to attempt any one which you know the best. Again, third question will be a long sum where you are having again 14 marks question. Out of that, there may be an option between two checks. As such students, you have only and only three practical chapters in your entire syllabus. You need to practice each and every chapter very, very thoroughly. The fourth question is your short notes. As you all know, it is same like your last year. There will be a short notes of 12 marks. Here I have written 14 marks, but it will be of 12 marks. You need to attempt any three short notes. It will be of four marks. Right? So out of option of five, you need to attempt three short notes. So again, I repeat here, it is of 12 marks. The total paper will be of 50 marks. Right? The theory also forms a very, very important part apart from your two theory chapters. Theory also comes from ratio analysis chapter, from your cash flow and from your fund flow. I'll be giving you the list of theory questions very well in advance. So that we can prepare accordingly. I hope each and everyone is clear with that part, clear with the syllabus, clear with the paper pattern. Fine. Few things, friends, before we start our lecture, particularly with the chapters. You all are meeting me on digital platform, right? So I hope you all are doing great at your home. And we'll be having a very, very learning and productive session during this particular lectures. I will be solving the sums hands-on along with you only. So you need to solve the sums each and every step. The only difference is I will not be in front of you solving on board, but I will be also sitting with you solving on my own paper and you will be solving on your own book, right? So any doubts, any queries, you can immediately again see the video. You can again send a query on Google Classroom. I am here only to solve your doubt. Just as I always say, it is account. Never carry forward your doubts. Always write off your doubts once the lecture is completed. Then only we can move forward. Right? So students, wishing you a very happy learning a new digital learning. I hope you all will do great. You are actually doing great and we'll be having a productive session, right? So thank you very much, each and everyone. This was all from my part regarding to your particularly introduction of that subject. The basic aim behind this first lecture was to guide you regarding what is the subject all about, what is the syllabus and what is the particularly paper pattern. So from the next lecture onwards, I will be starting first with the ratio analysis chapter. I will be going through first all the practical chapters. So first, we will be starting with ratio analysis chapter. We will be seeing the theory part of that. That is what are the formulas, understanding each and every type of ratio. Along with that, we'll be starting with the short sums of particular things. I'll be going very slow in my lecture so that you understand each and every part thoroughly and your concepts are clear, right? So this will be my flow of work. First, ratio analysis, then fund flow statement, then cash flow statement, and then we'll be moving on to the theory chapters particularly. By the time, I will be providing you all the sums for the next lecture very well in advance. Go through the questions once and then we'll be solving those questions 
according to the particular lecture time right so see you all friends in my next lecture thank you for giving your valuable time i wish you a very happy learning for all the subjects and have a great day ahead thank you very much students